Charges of illegal drug use by several Suns players have rocked the organization, tarnishing the image that took 19 years to build. Walter Pearl Davis, born September 9th, 1954. Every once in a while, we have to take it back and revisit players that had some of the craziest growth stunts that led to their career not turning out like expected, or in this case, to answer the baffling question of how isn't this guy in the Hall of Fame. We also go back to highlight some of the best talent from one of the golden eras in the sport we love. Today's feature could have easily made the Hall of Fame with the talent and unicornness to his game that was truly before its time. One of his nicknames was the Greyhound among others, but this one best describes what I see when I revisit his career. As soon as he touched the ball, it was like he was already in second or third gear while everyone else was stuck in first. Today they call that high motor. Well, Davis's motor couldn't be more resembling of high. He'd burst into speed down the court, looking like he was playing a different game than even some of his teammates. The ones who were able to keep up with his breakneck pace usually received an easy layup attempt, or he'd go up and finish the play himself high above the rim. He was the Rookie of the Year, six-time NBA All-Star, made an All-NBA team twice, and averaged a career high over 24 points a game as a rookie, where he made one of his All-NBA teams as well. He led his team to the conference finals twice in his 11 seasons with the Suns throughout the 80s, but would always fall short and in his last three years with the team, missed the playoffs completely. His shooting touch was so spectacular, it earned him another all-time great nickname, the man with the velvet touch. He didn't grow up practicing the three-pointer as there was none all the way into his third year in the NBA, so his numbers from distance won't impress you. But what will is that he shot 51% from the field for his career. Higher than Michael Jordan in his prime with the Bulls, or if you factor Michael's entire career. It's also higher than LeBron James's, who is considered by many this era's greatest player. But Walter Davis's motor and elevation weren't the only things high about him for the bulk of his career, and maybe even for its entirety. Supposedly, he was getting high on cocaine while playing all throughout the decade and entered rehab twice because of it. He was also a part of one of the biggest drug scandals in NBA history, where for immunity, he did the unthinkable, told on his guys. Not just any guys, his teammates. This led to even more drug use upon his return to the league and teams and players shadow alienating him, leading to opportunities lost because of it. Either way, his talent was good enough along with his start to become one of the best to ever do it. Here's three reasons that potential was never met and he's yet to make the Hall of Fame. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Walter Davis was a 6'6 small forward shooting guard from Pineville, North Carolina, born the youngest of 13 children. He was a star in high school and led his team to three state championships. He chose to stay close to home and became a star for the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill on stacked teams with at least four other future NBA players on the roster each year. He was drafted fifth overall by the Phoenix Suns in the 77 NBA Draft, adding immediate impact, averaging what would be a career-high 24.2 points a game, winning All-Rookie First Team and Rookie of the Year. But as the 70s came to a close, things got really weird. Stunt number one, using affected his game. After being drafted top 5 overall, Walter Davis immediately let the league know he wasn't coming to play around. In his first game in the NBA, he had 20 points, 6 rebounds and 5 steals as a plug and play starter from day 1. Again, what was unique about him was how quick his first step was and how he'd begin fast breaks like he was running and everyone else was standing still. 
He also had quick decision handles that allowed him to weave through stiff traffic, then it was off to the races. His first two to three seasons from 77 to the end of the 79-80 season were truly something to behold and looked like a Hall of Fame talent was in the making. His rookie season, the Suns won 49 games, 15 more than the team had done the year before, with Walter second on the team only to Hall of Famer Paul Westfall at 24.2 points a game, adding 6 rebounds and shooting 52% from the field. He was of course the Rookie of the Year, All-Rookie Team, but also made the All-NBA Second Team as well, and get this, was an All-Star, something rarely done by a rookie player. His scoring averages would dip over the next two seasons, but still enough to make All-NBA again in year two, and another NBA All-Star to follow. In his first four years, he was an NBA All-Star. But then, his production became noticeably fluctuant. From 21 to 18 to 14, back up again to 19 points, 20 to 15, and never really found a medium where you knew what you were getting from Davis. Around the beginning of the 80s, he found the popular party drug at the time, cocaine, and began heavily using. Although no one could ever tell by his appearance or actions, but in hindsight, it did explain why for a decade, the name of his game was inconsistency. He entered a drug rehab program in 1985 and was released after 30 days, averaging 23 points a game upon return. The cocaine 80s is a very well-known term to describe that period of time in the urban community and many players were affected by what seemed like a harmful recreational drug. Almost how weed became later on. They weren't educated or had examples of the drug effects long term, or at all for that matter, being the first era to really try it out and make it normal. He made the conference finals and playoffs numerous times throughout the 80s, making you wonder what his son's career would have been had he not been getting high. Stunt number two, snitching on his teammates. This next growth stunt really had nothing to do with Walter's game, but got him essentially shadow alienated in the NBA, where his own team were reluctant to re-sign him just one year removed from being an all-star. It more so showed his character and decision making whether you perceive it good or bad that didn't sit well with some of the players and teams and made Walter's playing life much more difficult and lackluster. By 1987, Walters and seemingly many players drug use had graduated to some even distributing cocaine and weed to other players as a way to either make some money on the side or to enjoy the nightlife together and in April 1987, five current and former Phoenix Suns at the time were indicted on drug related offenses, linking another six players former or on the roster to the case including Walter Davis. Nine men were charged with 21 felony counts of possessing or trafficking in cocaine, marijuana, or conspiring to do so. Right before details of the indictment were released, Walter again checked himself into rehab, seemingly to escape altogether, but Davis, in exchange for immunity, testified against his teammates at trial and was allowed to walk scot-free, even though Davis was most to blame and the reason they were caught. Their coach was fired, and new coach said he was surprised Walter was involved based on how he was playing. He played one more season with the Suns in 87-88 and was then lowballed by the team in free agency for half his past salary, so decided to sign with the Denver Nuggets. Reports were teammates nor the franchise wanted him around, knowing his character of self over the team. Stunt number three, career was never the same. Although Walter's game was still solid, especially being in his mid to late 30s when the scandal hit, leading to his testimony for immunity, it wasn't the same after as it didn't affect winning in Denver for the two and a half years he was there and when he was traded to Portland to finish the 1991 season, he was averaging six points a game. He returned to Denver and played his final season in the league in 91-92. He was 37 years old when he played his last game. 
With the motor spoken on earlier, it's no doubt without the distraction of the drug indictment and the perception of him from then that he could have had a better ending to what was still a solid career. He was supposed to be a lifer with the Suns, but the team didn't want him around after what he did and their relationship would sour thereafter and wasn't repaired until 94 when the team retired his jersey. He finished 479 points shy of 20,000 points in a career. Drugs and bad character may have kept and keeps this great talent out of the Hall of Fame. All in all, these were the biggest reasons Walter Davis, uncle to Hubert Davis, Michael Jordan's childhood idol, didn't become a Hall of Famer like his talents easily suggested he could have. He was still a great player that finished as the Suns' all-time leading scorer, which still holds place today. Made many people wonder what could have been had Walter not been addicted to cocaine or not alienate himself by telling on his guys. But then again, he would have been imprisoned, so we really wouldn't have known. Great player, but for these reasons mainly, he's not in the Hall of Fame. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunned Growth, and I'm out.